All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Gartner Ridge Day 2. Uh, I'm pretty sure you all know Brendan, not a new face to the Robert Show. No, I've been here, this is my second time. Second, second time. time. Okay, second and time. And the conversation that we had last time was pretty cool. Okay. Now we want, want to make it much more cooler. So, Brendan, let's do it. So we need, we need to up my game on this <laughs> one, okay. No, you're good. I'm but good. Uh, I have a curious question. I know you've been uh, talking to a lot of enterprise leaders, you've been doing talks, you've been talking to analysts. What have you been hearing from the leaders out here? Well, it's um, walking around the show floor, talking to customers. Uh, the two letters that are really everywhere are AI. True. We looked at every single booth and I found two booths that don't have the letters AI on it. It was amazing to me. So we're hearing that. The other thing we're hearing is that it's agentic, but people understand if the data's bad, agentic is just not going to work for them. Exactly. Right? So it's a big problem. That's true. And uh, I'm also curious because you did a panel discussion this morning and uh, you, you obviously had a full hours. So curious to know what were the key takeaways, what were folks asking about you know, uh, the topic. Can you tell us more about well, it? Well, the key takeaways, so we were trying to get three things across in that session. Yeah. One is you've got to have, you've got to have a trusted foundation of, for AI. Your data has got to be clean. The second thing is sovereign AI is becoming a challenge, especially in today's geopolitical landscape. It's just, just hard, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's not a political statement, it's just reality what we're dealing with. And the third thing that people are really talking about is they're really asking themselves, are we really ready for agentic AI? Mm. Are we? Some are, some aren't. That's a very important question. Since we're on this topic, I'm also curious to know, how do you see agentic AI reshaping the way Click helps its customers derive insights and make strategic decisions? Any thoughts there? Oh boy, yeah, so I talked a lot about this at Click Connect last year. Yes. I fundamentally believe that we call them the hipples, high potential, low experience. Hmm. Kids, right? Kids. Right yeah. out of college. Yeah. Their expectations are fundamentally changing. It used to just be that they would expect to ask a question on their phone and yeah. get some type of answer back to them. Now they're starting to expect, I want to ask a question and I want to have that task go, go and be done for me automatically. Exactly. So exactly. this dynamic is coming more and more into the enterprise and, and we're really investing there. That's awesome. Uh, I'm also wanting to learn a little about uh, what role does Gen AI play in augmenting or automating analytics workflows for your customers? Can you share any examples, use cases, customer stories? Yeah, so if, if you think about what we do, is like we, we support decision makers everywhere. About 90% of our users yeah. are just consumers of information. So True. we're using generative AI to start help telling stories with the data and augmenting the data so that they understand what the data is telling them. So they don't need to necessarily be data literate. That's one. For the creators, people that are building AI-driven applications, we're bringing generative AI into the product so that it will be easier for people to get up and running and build an application in less time. Yes, exactly, I like it. Uh, those are fantastic insights. So also, some key steps that I wanted to learn about was about transitioning from traditional analytics models to more adaptive, autonomous AI. What are your thoughts there? Wow. Um, it's a it's a mind shift for people. Very true. It is a big mind shift. So if you really think about what traditional analytics do, I don't know how to say this politely, but it's sort of like doing an autopsy after something happened, right? Exactly. With predictive AI, that's actually guiding you to some solution before a problem even happens. And so that mind shift of not looking backwards, but really trying to find patterns to yep. avoid a problem or avoid a situation, that's where it's really having the most impact. And that's going to require a mind shift for everybody that's been using analytics. Biggest mind shift as well, yes, you're right. And uh, I like those points. Uh, I'm also wanting to know about a little about the pitfalls. So what are the biggest pitfalls that organizations should avoid when integrating agent AI into analytics strategy? And I know you talk a lot to the, uh, the customers about it, right. so. Yeah. So the pitfalls, so the, it, I'll describe it a little bit more this way. It's, it's not necessarily a pitfall, but if your data isn't right. It's like doing a math problem. Mm. Right? You start with wrong information, what you're going to get on the end is going to be completely wrong. But the challenge with agentic AI is that there's sometimes there's going to be a human in the loop, but there's sometimes not going to be a human in the loop. Right. And if it goes wrong, 
yeah. you will end up on a news story, right? You won't be interviewed in a good way. You'll be talking about why you insulted your customer or why you did something bad. So really got to make sure you're, you're going to simulate the types of decisions you're going to make to avoid something bad happening when you put something into production. Love it. Uh, it all goes back to also the foundation, like you mentioned. Uh, you need to have the right data quality to make Completely. everything work here. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, one more quick question, uh, yeah. and that is, fun question I asked Drew as well, is about uh, Gartner. Uh, what, do you, what is one thing that you like about Gartner, and any key takeaways? What a, Gartner the event or Gartner, Gartner the company? the event. The event. Yeah. So, the biggest thing I liked about Gartner, especially this event, is getting to talk to customers and analysts, right? Love it, yeah. Uh, what we're hearing from customers sometimes validates what we're doing, but even more importantly, sometimes says, you may want to think about something different. So it's always about learning something new. It's, and we're learning a ton here. It's also the feedback that you're kind of always. getting and you're working on it and making it much better. And what they're Absolutely. hearing as well, what they're excited to. Exactly. That's awesome. One last question, I promise. And that I is about- that was the last question. So you're going to do one more? <laughs> I, I love to do always okay. that. Just one more thing, right? Yes, okay. always. Uh, if folks want to reach out to you, learn more about what you're doing, where can they follow you? Oh, so LinkedIn is always a good place. My, my profile is pretty public. I'm out there constantly posting. You can also come to click.com. Yes. And you can find any information you want to understand about Click. Awesome, this is great. Such a pleasure hosting you again on the Ravid Show. Always great insights. Uh, we'll keep the conversation going. I know there's Click Connect that's coming up, so excited about that. So I expect I'm going to be talking to you again sometime between May 13th and 15th. 15th, you know it. There we go. We are all set. Uh, awesome, thank you everyone for joining us today.